radical. In a perfect world, I'd be able to approach this and discuss this with a lot of detail. Because believe me, I got a lot to say, I'd want to say about this. But in reality, in the reality of the world that we live in, when I am actually a salesperson on the weekend, and I got to get all my shit together, I got to go through index, movies, games, comics. In this world we currently live in, I barely have any time for YouTube. So I pick and choose what I want to discuss. And this is something I find a lot of interest in that I want to discuss. Kyrie Irvin has been traded. He wanted to get traded months back, and it didn't work out. Everybody said, he's going to the Lakers. Well, this time, he got traded. And when I was told by my buddy he got traded, he got an update on his phone that Kyrie got traded, I thought, well, damn, that means the Lakers are definitely a legitimate title contender. I mean, maybe a favorite, because you got Anthony Davis, LeBron James, now Kyrie Irvin. All you need is for some of the other players to kind of do their part, the role players, and boom, you got another championship for LeBron. And I'm thinking, man, how they pull that off? The Nets were probably stupid to take on Westbrook because KD doesn't want to play with Westbrook again, so that means they're losing KD. So, damn, that's what I thought, you know. But it wasn't the Lakers. The Lakers missed out on getting Kyrie. Supposedly, the Lakers offered up Russell Westbrook and the two first-round picks, 2027-2029. But then the Nets said, fuck them picks. We're not sending Kyrie where he wants to go. I think a lot of that is they maybe they thought, I mean, the reality is uh, Finney Smith, I don't know much about Finney Smith, but Finney Smith and the two picks that they got from the Mavericks were actually a better deal for them probably than bringing on Russell Westbrook, who's been playing better. But still, Russell Westbrook is not somebody that, you know, you could probably go into a deep championship run with, I don't think. Even though he's not exactly Russell Westbrook anymore, he's still not where he needs to be to be on a championship contending team. Durant knows this. Durant left. He went to Golden State. Durant knows this. So I think if they make that move, Kyrie gets what he wants. He gets to go to a team that's not only a contender, maybe a favorite to win everything alongside LeBron James. And they have that reunion story. Everybody, you know, uh, he's happy. He's happy. And then media would have a field day with that, but he goes to the Mavericks. So maybe it's because of the relationship between the Nets and Kyrie, maybe a strained relationship. Definitely. And, you know, they're saying, Hey, you know, you want out, you want out. We're not sending you to the team you want to go to. No, we're going to send you to another team. And, you know, maybe he'll be happy in Dallas. I don't think he was expecting to go to Dallas, but that's what you get sometimes, right? So Kyrie's going to Dallas to pair up with Luka, who is an offensive machine, much like Kevin Durant. Some people say he's actually more of an offensive machine than Durant at this stage in their respective careers. And some people some people would say Luka is a better player than Durant. I mean, it's arguable. They're both you know probably top five in the NBA right now. So another question is, and there's, like I said, there's multiple angles to approach this from. So I'm going to try to wrap this up because I got other things to do. Another uh, thing to look at is the Mavericks and where they are right now in the West. And if they're actually true title contenders, well, the West is wide open. So maybe, maybe the Mavericks were smart to make this move because it's a gamble. It's a big gamble. Speaking of gambles, did I miss out on an Xbox one because I was recording this? Okay, I got it. Hopefully, I still got time for this bid. Okay, hopefully. Damn it! What did it go for? Eh, well, it went for like 100. Maybe I'll catch the next Xbox One bid. It was a Xbox One with 20 games. Sorry, I disrupted this. You know, sorry about that, but eh, it's okay. It's okay. Another bid will come around. Where was I? Yeah, so they had a big gamble. Much in the way I sometimes gamble on auctions online and sometimes I hit it big sometimes not so much but it might pay off and I think it's their message to Luca that hey we're going to try to do something for you we don't want you to be a, like a, a a one-man band on this team we're going to try to get you a running mate we're going to try to get you Kyrie and look at it short term does this make them title contenders I mean they, they struggled defensively and they got rid of Finney Smith who's a three and D guy for them 
So defensively, their offense better be something special because defensively, I think they're worse than even, you know, Brooklyn defensively. And, you know, you still got other teams to worry about, the Grizzlies, the Nuggets. I don't think they get past the Nuggets. So maybe this is more of like a longer-term move. You know, and again, like I said, you know, uh, their message to Luca that we're going to try to make some moves to help you out. Uh, maybe they'll make another move. I'm not sure what they could really do. But I think Brooklyn might be the winner ultimately of this trade. Because even though Kyrie was amazing for them when he was on the court and wasn't in some uh, crazy like drama or something like that or something going on with him where he couldn't play, Duran and Kyrie was a great combo. And they had some great role players, you know, some good th- uh, 3 and D guys. Not, not great defensive players, but they have some great shooters on the team. So they went on a run. I think they won 10, 11 straight games. So what do they do now? You got Ben Simmons, who's not doing great, definitely not great offensively. They got in this trade, if I didn't mention, they got, I think the Mavericks got Markeith Morris and Kyrie. And then in return, Brooklyn got some picks and they got um, Finney Smith and Spencer Dimwitty, I think it's his last name. They got Spencer Dimwitty, who actually was on the team. And constructed that way, I don't think they're a championship team. But what if they take Dimwitty, Finney Smith, and those picks, and they try to get a really good player before the end of the draft deadline? I know Zach Levine might be available. You got Bradley Bill, maybe they could push, make a push for. I don't know if there's a lot of players. Uh, Toronto's got that one guy, the short dude, the point guard. But I don't know if that's really what they need. I mean, Kyrie just kind of fit there with Durant very well on the court. But like I said, it's a lot of reasons outside of the court play that they wanted to get rid of Kyrie and Kyrie wanted to go. Uh, there was some headlines that said, actually, you know, now he's your headache, Dallas. So both teams, uh, what do you think? Do you think Dallas is the winner of this trade? Do you think Brooklyn is the winner of this trade? Do you think both of those teams won? You know who's the biggest loser in this trade, actually? LeBron James and the Lakers are the biggest loser of this trade. Because what are they going to do? What move are they going to make before the trade trade deadline? I don't think they have any real big moves to make. So, uh, yeah, that's my quick thoughts on that. And even saying quick thoughts, I think they still went 10 minutes. But I'm telling you, I could have went longer, but uh, I got to go. I got to go. I got to go.